yeah, the public thought Kennedy looked great. You know, uh, under the lights in those days, a blue shirt really is better than a white shirt. Uh, it helps if you speak in complete sentences and look at the cameras. <laughs> no question. People reacted to that. And yes, Nixon looked like he'd been sleeping under a highway for a week. <laughs> but the numbers said, so what? Right. Because the trial heats, the horse race, didn't budge a millimeter. And between the first and the second one, and between the first and the fourth, they hardly, the needle hardly moved at all. And we also looked into another, it's an example of something that gets repeated for 60 years, and people think it's repeated because it's true, namely that Nixon was fantastic on the radio, and Kennedy was fantastic on television, and that's really what happened. There is absolutely no evidence to support that contention at all. There was a survey, an audience survey, done by Sindlinger's people, but it wasn't published until after the election. And some indication you have to discount it because the radio listeners tended to be more rural by 1960 and thus more conservative. Um, Nixon was very good in the debates, point counterpoint. The country was divided, change, continuity, uh, take some risks for peace, Cold War strength. Um, right down the middle, it, we made an analogy in the general election to a couple of guys on a teeter-totter. And in the course of those three or four months, the thing would move an inch or two one way, and that's about it. And the debates need to be re-examined in that context, I think, because they are not the key to the election. 